everyone, it's Winnie from Asian Boss. Did you know that Japan is actually a very popular destination for international students? And in fact, there are over 300,000 international students in Japan. So, why do they come to Japan and what is it like studying abroad in Japan in 2021? Let's hit the streets of Tokyo to find out. Just to start off, where are you from and what are you studying right now? Hi, um, I'm from Vietnam and I'm studying environmental sciences. Well, I've been in Japan since 2012 for the bachelor and then I did my master's and now I'm doing my PhD. I'm from Mongolia and I'm a master's student at Tokyo Institute of Technology and I'm studying the interfacial uh, interaction between the protein and the biomaterials. I'm originally from Bangladesh and uh, now I'm studying engineering at the University of Tokyo. I'm in my uh, doctoral study. I'm from America and right now I'm at the University of Tokyo. I'm a first year's master's student and I'm in the graduate program of environmental science. I'm from Alaska, USA. I'm getting my master's from United Nations University. It's just up there. I'm focusing on resiliency and climate change and I live in Alaska so we have a lot of climate change happening yes. and it's really crazy. I'm from Kyrgyzstan and I'm a research student at Tokyo University. Was it difficult to kind of, you know, apply for schools or programs in Japan? Yeah, I think it was very difficult because um, the programs like um, here are very competitive. They only selected two people from the whole country every year. So that was very hard. Why did you decide to come and study in Japan? Um, first of all, the higher education standard is really good in here and also the research facility, research target. While I was young, I always heard about Japan, about the technology and the nice people and also the environment here. So I kind of had a wish to go to Japan, not for study, at least for travel or something. But later uh, when I grew up and I learned more about the Japanese technology and their specialization in the engineering, also the energy sector, then I saw there are some good uh, topics here, taught here, and also the ranking of the university is quite good. What were some of the expectations that you had before you come, and were they is Japan um, meeting the, those expectations, or is it kind of different? In Russia, we have this, uh, you know, a lot of uh, image about Japan that it's like. Uh, country of the future and robots everywhere uh, <laughs> but reality was actually different. Maybe something that surprised me a lot is that Tokyo is quite an old city. <laughs> old city? Yeah, because yeah, I expected it to be more like very, you know, very futuristic. Definitely the city has a lot of history and it has a lot of like very, very old buildings. Before I came to Japan, I thought that many Japanese people can speak English. So I prepare myself like to speak English to get you know to get know to know each other like to know about like the people here. But I came here and it was like there's not many many people can speak uh, English. So it was difficult for me. What is your Japanese level right now? Do you think it's necessary for people to speak Japanese in order to study here? Not if your program is in English. So and my 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 level. I don't know, I never took a JLBT. <laughs> it used to be a lot better, but my master's program is all in English. So I passed JLPT and one uh, two years ago. So that's the highest level? Uh, yeah, it's the highest level, but you know, it's never enough. You always uh, need to study to improve your level. If you want to stay here for a longer time, if you want to get a job, definitely the Japanese language skills will give you a heads up. I'm here on mainly for the study, and my program is also an international program. So you can survive even with no Japanese at all. But I recommend like to have a minimal conversation level Japanese so that you can also blend into the society, you know? What are the common like stereotypes or myths um, for international students in Japan? Maybe everyone is like super into anime or something like that, but not everyone. Ooh, I've heard a few. I've heard that international students as neighbors, if you live in an apartment, are really loud compared, <laughs> compared to uh, Japanese people. I, I think if you were uh, a different race, though, it, it would it would be more difficult because uh, I know that there's some restaurants sometimes, and like customer service will be like, "Oh, they're gaijin, don't don't serve them," and I think that's not okay. Why do you think they they would reject foreigners to to go into a restaurant? 
I'm honestly not too sure. Maybe it has something to do with like, they see foreigners, whether they're work working or international students like myself, as invading Japan and as a way that's taking away the culture that's been established here for you know, centuries. Most some students come from the Europe or the North America. They are kind of like exchange students, yeah. so they come here for six months or for a short time period, but they get their original degree from their own university. And uh, some other students, they come from the third world countries or the Asian countries. Mm -hmm. So most of them, they have a uh, plan to stay here or work here for a longer time. Mm -hmm. So the Japanese people, they might have different attitudes towards them. If you come from the Asian or the South Asian countries, they might think oh, they may not be qualified enough or uh, they may not uh, know our culture or they may not respect, even respect our culture. But uh, when people get used to these things, uh, they know, like the students, they also try to adapt to the culture and the society. If you say that you're from, for example, you're an international student and you're from Todai, K or Waseda or Kyodai, they look at you like as you are the genius, <laughs> like, oh my gosh, like, you know, and you get a special treatment. Like on the day when I arrived to Japan, when uh, I just stopped the lady to help me to find the way, and she learned that I'm from Todai, and she, she just took me to the place, like, and bought me the ticket, and I'm like, whoa. Like, <laughs> people are like telling you things like, oh, thank you for coming to our country, like, thank you for being here, like, they're so grateful. What are the biggest differences between college back home and college in Japan? Uh, Japanese education would encourage kind of more self-sufficient in uh -huh. terms of note-taking, reading, building uh, your own thinking. And or like individual like studying and all that. Individual yeah. studying. In the US it's more of a conversation, but in Japan it seems like we're there to listen. And I sometimes even felt if I asked a question, it's like the professor, if they're really Japanese, like they didn't study abroad or something, so they're not used to that, they'll even like be offended maybe, like, oh I wasn't expecting a question or something, and they'll like talk around the question. It's such a lost opportunity to not hear from the Japanese students because they're crazy smart. Like these people got into Todai, they're like super smart, but they're not as like talkative. I don't know. I just feel like it's such a shame because I want to know what they have to say. So something that really surprised me when I was taking classes for my first semester here was the amount of classes taken in a typical Japanese semester. So in the U.S., you usually take three to four classes at one time, and they're multiple times a week, so you get reinforcement from each lesson. But in Japan, it was like you have one class, and it's only once a week, but you're taking 12 of them at a time in one semester. So that was kind of, that was a bit jarring, <laughs> and a, a pretty big adjustment, because I felt like I wasn't absorbing the information as well, since I wasn't getting it multiple times a week. Uh, but actually, by the end of the semester, I got used to it and it was totally fine. Comparing to Russia, your schedule is really free and you can uh, make up it by yourself. So you can choose uh, classes, what you want to study, classes you want to take, and uh, it's uh, really up to you. So you can wake up in the morning, enjoy your like routines and go to classes and then have your part-time job. Uh, come back uh, to your dorm and spend time with your friends. So it's everything up to you. What do you think are the biggest benefits studying in Japan? I think it's so cool that you can have a part-time job with your student visa. The minimum wage, like I worked at a cafe and I still made enough. Like I could, I could fly to like Okinawa. I could do what I want. It's, you could work at a convenience store and make like a fine amount of money. You could easily support yourself if you could pay for your own program and I think that's really really cool and you have the health insurance that's so I'm from America like I'm also lucky to have health insurance but that's insane the health care system here is so nice. So the Japanese education system I think it's like a very well organized so you get a certain amount of uh, qualification, like if you go to a certain place and you uh, get enrolled in a well, uh, a good ranked university, then you have very good potential to get employed to better places and it opens the opportunities. So on the flip side, what are some of the downside or um, challenges studying in Japan as an international student? Um, I think it has many uh, competition. It's really, you know, 
there's the many students here, so you really need to push yourself hard. Communicating is, is could be difficult, right? Because sometimes uh, I could only speak for my own supervisor. He is not very, he doesn't want to say directly like what exactly he wants me to do. Japan, I think, is a place where people don't say things explicitly. And as a group, you're supposed to yeah. understand. And in Corona, when people don't meet directly, it gets a little bit difficult. I didn't have like friends or family here, so I really had to build everything like from scratch. I, I'm coming from a country where people are, are more sociable than here. So at the beginning, it was like, oh, why is so many people are just introverted, like, you know, and not like willing to talk? Especially in Tokyo University, oh, yeah. people are just nerdy. <laughs> I, I've been reading a lot of articles that mention about the, um, the suicide uh, rates in Japan. It's quite like high in the world. And there's a lot of people like, you know, Sometimes I go on the street and I see a lot of people, they feel like really lonely and so I, it also like affects myself a little bit, like I feel like really sad but you know like if you try to let things off and then like you just try to be positive. By nature the Japanese people are a bit closed, you know, so they want to keep within themselves so yeah they are now opening up so when you come to Japan uh, you don't expect everything like everywhere else. So people normally they don't come to you and ask you questions but when you make friends with them then you see that oh they're not different from others you know but you have to try to break to the shackle yeah 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 oh. and when you discover the inner beauty of the japanese people that is really great by the way how has covid affected your study in japan um i haven't been back to my campus for a year <laughs> You can easily be isolated in Japan, and with COVID, you're for sure isolated. So, yeah, I think COVID has a really, it's hard on mental health. Uh, before we go to school and then we meet our friends and then, you know, we just join the classes together. But when COVID like occurs in Japan, then we need to study at home. Did you have any friends around you who have to leave Japan due to the pandemic situation? Yes, I have a lot of, uh, especially my Vietnamese friends. Uh, so last year, they came back to, to my home country to celebrate the New Year in Vietnam. But because of COVID, then there's no flights back to Japan. So they have to stay in Vietnam until now it's like one year. And then they just don't know when they will come back. I think it's, it's really like unfortunate for them. I have a friend who is actually supposed to come the same time as me in January. Yeah. But she, she's in China right now, and she's still not here. She can't get in still. So I don't know what the situation is for all international students, but I know at least for her, she's been trying to get in and she hasn't been allowed. And it's been a whole semester, you know, which is a quarter of our program. So uh, I don't How know. do you feel about that? It's frustrating, especially if you're a master's student or doctorate student, any type of research student, like, right. It's just going to stall the amount of time, like stall your progress essentially because your research is based on doing things in the lab with specimen usually. And so if you can't be in the lab, then you're just kind of wasting your time. I also personally know like some students who struggled with, uh, like they went back home due, like before pandemic and they were about to come during like the lockdown, but they couldn't and they had the rent here and you know, they cannot cancel the contract, so they lost a lot of money because they couldn't cancel their rent. And they also didn't receive any scholarship on that period. So I think there was uh, some of my friends even were writing the petition against it. Because of new strict rules and uh, tests uh, and uh, closed borders, I don't know when I can see my family again. So I think it's the hardest uh, one. I can go to Russia, but the problem is that I can't come back to Japan. This is uh, the most challenging thing. Yeah, so what do you feel about that kind of policy or decision of the government? Um, I don't feel that it's the uh, right thing because I know that uh, Japanese who are going to, like, you know, business trips, yeah. they're coming back to yeah. Japan. And uh, so the possibility of getting COVID is the same. Yeah. Why can't new uh, foreign students, especially if you know that they have, uh, like, uh, 
uh, COVID test and they don't have COVID, why don't they come to Japan? Would you consider working in Japan after graduation? Why and why not? Maybe for a short term, some postgrad uh, opportunities, I will definitely give it a try. But uh, in the long term, I will also look for other opportunities all over the world and also back in my country, <laughs> if it is possible. So yeah, Japan is a nice place to stay and work, but uh, this is not my last destination. I've been in Japan for nine years, so it's quite natural that I will be working in Japan because the connections, the people I know, the network, the way of doing things, right. uh, those things I kind of understand. I'm thinking about that. I am planning to do my uh, PhD here. Do you think it's difficult for international students to find jobs in Japan? I know a lot of international school students who work here, so I don't think that's like the the barrier is not for the international school student or like Japan student. The barrier might be like language. Do you know like Japanese very well or not? Yes, I am. Now I'm uh, preparing for my job hunting in Japan. Why would you want to find a job in Japan? Well, I want to become like a connection between Vietnam and Japan because recently um, the two countries have a really good relationship and there are a lot of Vietnamese people living in Japan and, and also Japanese people living in Vietnam. So in the future, I want to become like um, a bridge to kind of like enhance the relationship between the two countries. If you have one advice for people who are interested in coming to study in Japan, what would that be? The number one thing would be if you're into anime or manga, not to come to Japan solely because you like those things. Because I think the Western world fetishizes Japan quite a bit. And so when people come here because of the otaku culture, uh, they expect it to be one way. But it's actually extremely different, um, and there's just so much more to the country than just that. And I think a lot of people confuse that. Be ready to study and uh, to be open-minded to everything. Not to be stubborn, but try to be open to new culture, yeah. to new language. And uh, first of all, learn Japanese. <laughs> learn Japanese, make Japanese friends. Try to you know, interact with Japanese culture as much as you can and uh, try to understand people. Everyone is different. Every country is different. Just uh, um, be open to uh, this culture, to, Jap to Japan, and uh, you, you will be enjoying it.